Ladies and gentlemen, can we give her a massive luminosity welcome? This is such an inspiration, young lady. Massive round of applause. Here she is. Please be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. environmental concern. Yep. So, 
what's the problem? If you look around, you'll probably notice that plastic is everywhere. And I really do mean everywhere. The reason that plastic is such a problem is that it's built to last forever, yet we only often use it for a few minutes at a time, and then it doesn't go away. Virtually every piece of plastic ever made still exists in some form today. This is an example of rubbish that I picked up at a local beach cleanup. All of this rubbish was picked up at one beach cleanup at two different locations. Humans have produced 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic so far. To put that into perspective, 8.3 billion tonnes is the same weight as 80 million blue whales. That's a lot of plastic waste stuck on our planet. It is also estimated that around 8 million tonnes of plastic goes into our oceans each year, meaning that our marine life is swallowing more plastic than ever before. Sadly, the pace of plastic production is showing no sign of slowing down. And if these current trends continue, it has been estimated that by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in our oceans by weight. These ocean currents often push this plastic rubbish into a gyre. Think of a gyre as a large, slow-moving whirlpool in the ocean. Once it enters the gyre, it's slowly pulled into the centre, where it forms a giant garbage patch. There are five giant garbage patches all around the world, and the largest one is the North Pacific Garbage Patch between Hawaii and California. The patch is so big that it's now three times the size of France. The patch contains 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic. That's equal to 250 pieces of plastic for every human being on Earth. In these two displays, shows exactly what 250 pieces of plastic looks like. These gyres show us how we have literally dug ourselves into a plastic hole. And if we don't reduce our reliance on plastic, this can only get worse. In this container is a single-use plastic bag. The other is a mole of a jellyfish. Plastic bags are one of the most common things found in our ocean. And to a hungry sea turtle, this bag looks very similar to its favorite food, a jellyfish. There are seven sea turtle species around the world that have evolved over hundreds of millions of years. Six out of these seven sea turtle species are now listed as at risk of extinction because of plastic pollution. Another big threat to sea turtles is million balloons. These are some balloons that I found washed up at my beach. When a balloon pops in the ocean, its tattered ends can bear a striking resemblance to jellyfish or sea sponges, which turtles love to feast on. When a turtle swallows a balloon, it can block its intestines, leading to starvation. So, balloons may be great if you're a party animal, but not so great for the marine animals that we share the planet with. You might think that life in the skies might make birds safe from the dangers of plastic pollution. Sadly, no. There is so much plastic rubbish going into our oceans each year that around 90% of seabirds are now eating it too. And the rate is steadily growing as global production of plastics increases. An example is the albatross. These birds are more prone to eating it because they fish by skimming their beaks across the top of the water. And by doing this, they are taking in the pieces of plastic that are floating on the surface. And with 8 million tonnes of plastic going into our oceans each year, avoiding this fate is becoming more and more difficult. Behind me here is a display I made showing people how long until a plastic product is gone. Plastic water bottles are an interesting one. Around one million plastic water bottles are bought every minute around the world. And sadly, most of those end up in landfill or in the ocean, where they can take around 450 years to break down. It's sad to think that that is how long our plastic footprint lasts on the planet. These are samples of microplastics and nurdles. When you look closely, you can't tell what anything once was. That's because once plastic enters our ocean, it doesn't keep its original shape. Originally, some of these pieces of plastic would have looked just like this actual water bottle. But over time,
time, plastic becomes brittle and breaks down into tiny particles, which are called microplastics. These microscopic pieces of plastic are often mistaken for food by small fish and plankton, until ultimately they make their way back up the food chain and end up on our dinner plates too. So what did this bottle show is why it's physically impossible for us to do anything about cleaning up the smaller pieces of plastic that have already entered our oceans. We need to stop them from getting there in the first place. So as I started learning more about this issue, I really did feel like I had to do something. Plastinction is a campaign I made up to make people more aware about plastic pollution. The idea is that one day, plastic will become extinct and not our beautiful marine life, which will keep them safe and thriving in their ocean homes. So, think plastinction. Make plastic extinct in your life today. The thing is, if we stop buying singles products, companies will stop making it. We have the power to make them change, and we need to spend our money on sustainable products. So, make the pledge today. If you can't reuse it, refuse it. I look forward to a time when plastic will be extinct. And the only place that we can see it is where we visit a historical museum. Imagine seeing rare plastic objects conserved in glass cabinets, just like these. Evidence of our once throwaway society that is now just a relic of time in our planet's history. Remember the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, where a golden-haired girl liked everything to be just right. In the oceans, Everything needs to be just right for life to exist and thrive. But at the moment, plastic is disrupting the balance of life in the sea. And humans are altering the just right conditions to the extreme. From the stomachs of baby seabirds to the depths of the sea, plastic pollution is clogging up our oceans. So, just like Goldilocks found baby bear's chair, porridge and bed, just the way she liked it, in the oceans, Everything needs to be just right for life to exist and thrive. Although the size of the plastic waste problem is scary, the numbers tell us that small actions, like being more aware of your plastic use, can make a big difference. Things like carrying a reusable water bottle, a reusable bag, a keep cup, a reusable straw and cutlery are just a few ideas that can help. And of course, an important one not to forget is that we can all help the ocean by picking up a few pieces of rubbish from our community each day. Marine debris isn't an ocean problem. It's a people problem. But that means people are the solution. And together, we can turn the tide on plastic pollution as individuals and as families. What you do on your own may seem like one tiny drop in the bucket. But if we all work together now, we can show our compassion towards the ocean. The real danger in the ocean has no teeth. Humans are the real threat. It's what we make, this plastic. We depend on it, and now we're drowning in it. And even eating it. In a global study based on nearly 20 years worth of research, scientists have shown that humans are consuming around five grams of plastic a week, mostly by drinking tap, and bold water and eating seafood and salt. This is the amount of plastic it takes to make a credit card. This is a huge wake up call. If we don't want plastic in our bodies, we need to stop the millions of tons of plastic that continues to leak into nature each year. So let's change the world's attitude towards plastic within one generation. Because now it's a planetary emergency. At this precise moment, it's literally sink or swim. As Anders saw from the Apollo spaceship over 50 years ago, our planet is an ocean planet, and it's on us to protect the Earth's most important resource. Compassion is the key to saving the ocean. We are the little drops that together make up the ocean, and I believe that we can make a huge wave of change.